It is said, count not your life in the number of breaths that you breathe. Count your life in the number of moments that took your breath away. These were the moments when we were fully inspired. Inspiration is the fuel that energizes our life. It empowers ordinary people to put in their best and become experts in their respective fields. And lack of inspiration transforms geniuses into ordinary people. Hence, inspiration is such a vital ingredient. If we are inspired, the biggest obstacle seems puny. What is this? And when uninspired, a tiny difficulty seems like an unsurmountable hurdle. That is why somebody said that you may lose everything in life but your enthusiasm and you will gain it all back again. But that person who has lost his enthusiasm, now he is truly bankrupt. Henry David Thoreau said, Nobody is as old as he who has outgrown enthusiasm. So whether it is a material endeavor or a spiritual endeavor, enthusiasm makes the difference between failure and success. That is why Jesus told his followers, be either hot or cold. If you are lukewarm, I spit you out. The Yoga Darshan says, Tivra Samvegana Masanna. In your pursuit of the supreme goal, endeavor with all your enthusiasm. The great sage Ramakrishna Paramahans related, Fifty years ago, in India, farming used to be done by the bulls. So farmers would bring these young bulls to the fair to sell them. And customers would come to purchase. But how do they come to know which bull is energetic and will do its work? So the customer would kick the sitting bull in the back on its tail. If the bull continued to sit, the farmer would decide this bull is no good. And if the bull got up, the farmer would think this bull has got energy in it. It is worthwhile and will do good work. So, inspiration has been recognized as the ingredient for success in all fields. Is it something that we are born with? No. We can change our inspiration. Sometimes circumstances are responsible for it. There was once a factory worker who used to work in the evening shift from 4 p.m. till midnight. The factory was an hour away from his house and he would walk down to it. At midnight, he would return walking. There was a graveyard in the way. So on this night, he decided to take the shortcut. He walked through that graveyard and saved a full half an hour. Nothing untoward happened in the graveyard, so he thought it's safe and he can do it every day. Now, daily after his factory shift, he would take the shortcut. One day, unknown to him, a new grave had been dug right on the path. It was a moonless, 
cloudy night pitch dark walking along the path he suddenly fell into the grave now he realized that he has fallen into a new grave he tried to claw his way out but found it was difficult it was 7 feet deep so he decided to spend the night there and next day somebody would come to take him out a few moments went by and a drunkard came that way the drunkard with his intellect destroyed also fell into the grave now the drunkard became scared and came to his senses i am in a grave in this graveyard on the other side of midnight i hope no spirits make their appearance let me get out of here as quickly as possible he was trying to claw his way up but finding it impossible and this man sitting on the other side was watching the drama so he decided to convey his wisdom to the drunkard and unannounced he came from the back and patted him my dear fellow now what does the drunkard find there's a hand on his back that man announced there is no use trying you cannot get out the drunkard was scared out of his wits suddenly he found the inspiration to get out he leapt a few more inches until he reached the edge and pulled himself out now that inspiration within him changed so it's not that people don't have the ability to be inspired factory managers say their workers are uninspired but see them on friday afternoons when they get out of the factory how inspired they are so this is a quality that we can develop within ourselves how do we tap into this factors were analyzed that motivate or demotivate people it was found that if the boss has been too harsh on the subordinate it is demotivating if the boss has criticized it is demotivating but the same situation seem to motivate others one man says okay now i will not give my best the other says really i'll put in so much of hard work that my boss will have to accept that i am good so what motivates then and what demotivates in toronto social scientists interviewed two brothers one of them was a drunkard a derelict he had cirrhosis of the liver he was a wife beater and had repeatedly gone to prison and his younger brother his life was a complete success so the social scientists asked the elder brother and why are you in such a mess he said what else could i be my father was a drunkard he was an alcoholic wife beater i saw him make his life such a mess i grew up in those circumstances how could i be any better the scientist said you know he has got a point they asked the younger brother how come you have got it all right your health is good you don't have vices you have a wonderful harmonious family you are well praised in your work what is the secret of your success he said how could i not do it like this i saw my father make all the mistakes and there was no way i could repeat them the scientist said you know he has also got a point now in the same environment one is getting motivated the other is getting demotivated what then is the secret of motivation the point to understand is there are two kinds of motivation the first is external motivation and the second 
is inner motivation. External motivation means to be inspired by rewards that others offer. If your boss says work hard and you will get a promotion, that is an external motivation. Now in that case, the key to your inspiration lies in the hands of others. Tomorrow, he does not give you the promotion, you get demotivated. However, if we are internally motivated, we can always tap into that source irrespective of the external environment. So, as we grow and mature in life, this inner motivation is the one that we need to reach out to. This lesson was taught to me by my spiritual master many decades ago when he called me to his monastery and he asked me to study the scriptures so that I may distribute this knowledge subsequently. As a part of my study, I felt that I should also practice public speaking because I would need that skill later. The only problem was that there was no public in that monastery. So I would try speaking to a wall. And there can be nothing more demotivating than speaking to a wall. Because it will not even say, I don't like the joke that you are saying. So after 5-10 minutes, I would become uninspired and stop. I went to my guru and said, can you please designate somebody who will sit and listen to me for an hour every day while I speak to him. He utilized that situation as an opportunity to teach me a life lesson. He said, look, my child, inspiration or the lack of it don't have to come from the outside. They can all happen from the inside. Remember this formula all your life. If you develop an intense desire, you will then make a firm resolve. When you have a firm resolve, you will put in immense effort and that is how you will become. But if your desire is weak, the resolve will be mild. The effort will be marginal and that is how you will become. When I received that instruction from my Guru, I said, now I need to follow it, come hell or high water. I understood that carelessness is coming from the inside and I have the ability to remove it. After that, I was able to give talks to walls, to bushes, to cornfields, to water canals, to anything. It became the easiest thing because I had tapped in to the inner source. So, if we wish to lead an inspired life, we must learn to develop the quality of inner motivation. And how do you get motivated from within? Give yourself a strong reason, a strong why. When you have a strong reason for doing something, you automatically become motivated. If you wish to be inspired to follow that healthy diet, if you wish to be inspired to stick to your daily regimen of exercise and yoga every day, convince yourself of the benefits you will get from that regimen. Convince yourself of the harm you will cause yourself by not sticking to the regimen. That is why power. This why power is extremely powerful. We people think the mind is not under my control. 
but that's not really true if the intellect decides something is important it has the ability to hold the mind in its control consider for example you have a weakness for some delicacy some butterscotch or chocolate chip ice cream and you have been fasting for 2 days after 2 days your friend brings for you the ice cream now the mind yearns for it i want that the mind asks the intellect there is great pleasure in front of me can we indulge the intellect sanctions go ahead and the intellect has instructed the mind the mind has instructed the hand and the hand has put the spoon there and is bringing the spoon to the mouth at that moment if your second friend comes and says what are you doing you wish to die die what do you mean i mean there is poison in it potassium cyanide intellect says potassium cyanide this is dangerous throw it the intellect instructs the mind the mind has instructed the hand and the hand has chucked that ice cream here this person has suddenly got the ability to resist where did it come from it was the power of the intellect over the mind you want to test his detachment offer him a million dollars sir eat it i will give you a million dollars he says what will a dead man do with a million dollars i don't want it oh but have you seen anybody put poison in it no have you ever seen poison in your life no then my friend has told me there is poison there is your friend absolutely reliable and honest and trustworthy no no i have got him telling lies a few times a friend who is not completely trustworthy his one statement enabled you to desist from indulging in that object of pleasure which was the ice cream merely by the conviction of the intellect so if we can tap into the why power that will then enable us to enthuse ourselves and bring out the best in us in the desired task and enable us to bring out the best we have to perform the task at hand how then can we develop this why power how then can we convince our intellect to tap in to this vast reservoir of inspiration we will discuss this some other time